welcome back. In this module, we will discuss a time sampled MM1Q and we will discuss a very important theorem about the MM1Q known as Berg's theorem. Okay, so you already know what an MM1Q is. So you have a arrival process with this poson of rate lambda. Service is exponentially distributed, IID exponentially distributed across customers with some parameter mu, all right. And uh, this arrival service process is independent of arrival process. Okay, so this is what an MM1Q is. There is one server, all right. Now, if you look at some small delta, time interval delta, you can look at the system evol evolving in the small time steps delta, okay, and that will lead us to a countable state Markov chain as we will see, okay. So, in each of these little intervals delta, the probability of getting an arrival is lambda delta plus little low delta. Right, that is because of the Poisson process, right. So, at in each of these small micro intervals, you have a probability lambda delta plus little o delta of having an arrival and probability 1 minus lambda delta plus little o delta of having no arrival, all right. Using this, as a, likewise, the service process is also uh, exponential, it is a memoryless process. So, if there is, if there is a customer in service, the probability that that particular customer complete service in a particular interval lambda delta is delta is mu delta or mu delta plus flow delta. So, this can be used to derive a Markov chain like so. So, I am going to denote the state of the queue by the number of customers in the system, okay. So, there is no limit to how many customers there are in an MO1 queue, okay. When you are in state 0, the queue is empty, you can have an arrival in this tiny little delta interval, you can have, a, have an arrival with probability lambda delta plus little o delta and no arrival with probability 1 minus lambda delta plus little o delta, okay. If you are in state 1 which means there is one customer, you can have, well three things can happen, you can have an arrival with probability lambda delta plus little o delta, the customer in service can finish his or her service and leave with probability mu mu delta plus little o delta or you can just stay put, you can have neither which is with probability 1 minus lambda delta minus mu delta plus little o delta, all right. So, this is also mu delta plus little o delta and so on. So, all the forward transition probabilities are lambda delta plus little o delta the reverse transition probabilities are mu delta plus little o delta. So, I am just assuming that delta is very small, so that mu delta is still a probability, right. So, if delta is, so uh, this picture is valid as long as delta is less than uh, 1 over lambda plus mu, right. Otherwise, this will not be probabilities, this will not make any sense. So, if I choose delta small enough, uh, this is a uh, this is a valid picture, right? So as you can see, uh, for the so this is basically a birthday chain, right? If you are willing to neglect these little o probabilities of having two arrivals, for example, you can jump from one to three in a small interval little del delta with probability little o delta, right? The probability is not zero, but I'm not drawing these transitions here because I'm just neglecting them. Okay, so I am neglecting little o delta terms. Uh, you can theoretically have two arrivals, uh, but I am neglecting it, right? With that understanding, this becomes a fairly good approximation of an MM1Q, and it's uh, it's a very good approximation if delta is very small. All right. So with that approximation, with the approximation that delta is very small, you get a birth death chain. This is a birth death chain. All right. So, we know already know quite a bit about birthday chains. We know that 
the Markov chain is reversible, right? And we also know what its steady state probability is, stationary distribution is. So, we are going to assume that uh, lambda is less than mu, okay? This under this regime, when lambda is less than mu, you will get positive recurrence, okay? Uh, so, rho is equal to lambda over mu. If you notice the forward transition probability divided by the reverse transition probability uh, with this ratio, I am taking to be rho which is less than 1. In this case, I know that we have from earlier calculations, I know that pi naught is simply 1 minus rho and pi i is simply uh, 1 minus rho times rho to the i for i greater than or equal to 1, okay. So, in this Markov chain, the stationary distribution corresponding to the customers, i customers being present is simply 1 minus rho times rho to the i, okay, which is like a geometric distribution. Uh, except it also takes the value 0, it is like a shifted geometric distribution and with this distribution you can calculate the expected number of customers and all that, okay. And uh, once you know the expected number of customers, you can calculate the expected waiting time using Little's law, all of that we have studied before, right. Yeah, so, this formula is useful. My main topic of discussion here is reversibility. Right, this is a birthday chain with this uh, pi. Uh, I know that birthday chains are reversible, all right. So, the mm1 q is reversible, okay. I should really be saying this time sampled Markov chain of the mm1 q is reversible. I am just asserting that the mm1 q is reversible. Uh, in fact, MM1Q corresponds to a continuous time Markov process, which we will study later, but the statement is correct, okay. As a continuous time Markov process, in fact, the MM1Q is reversible also. Uh, what I really am saying in this context is that the uh, time sampled MM1 Markov Q is reversible, Markov chain is reversible, okay. So, what does that mean? That means that if an MM1Q is running in forward time and I tape the Q running, okay. And then I play the tape in reverse. I should not be able to distinguish the forward tape and the reverse tape, correct? That is what reversibility means. So, suppose I have a box, okay, there is some MM1Q inside, okay. I do not know that there is an MM1Q inside, uh, I do not know what is happening inside and all, I do not know. The only thing I see is that there is a arrival process coming at me at rate lambda, okay, in forward time, and then customers are leaving. Correct. So, when I play the tape in forward direction, so there is a box, customers are coming and then customers are leaving. That is all that I will see. In reverse time, what happens? If I just play the time in reverse, I do not know what is inside, right? All the departures from the queue will seem like they are arriving into the queue, and all the arrivals in forward time will seem like departures out of the reverse queue right, correct. What we are saying is that if you do not look inside the box, this process looks, uh, I mean, if you, if you just play the process of arrivals and departures, all right, you will not be able to tell whether the chain is running this way or the time is running this way, all right. So, it is the chain is same MM1Q inside, okay. This is just, I am just reversing the tape. Okay, this is forward, this is reverse, okay. So, these look like arrivals, reverse time, okay. Now, what am I saying? The reverse process is indistinguishable from the forward process, which means the arrivals here have to be Poisson of rate lambda, right? Because the, the reverse chain is also a MM1Q, right? So, this looks like uh, the arrival to the reverse process should also be a Poisson process because the reverse process is an MM1Q, right? The statistically indistinguishable. So, the arrival process to the reverse Q should be indistinguishable statistically from the arrival process to the forward Q. But the arrival process to the reverse queue is the same as the 
departure process from the forward queue. All right, because you are seeing this departure process in forward time or in reverse time, right? So, the, so the departure process from the forward queue looks like the arrival process to the reverse queue. The arrival process to the reverse queue has to be a Poisson process because of reversibility. So, the departure process from the original queue, the forward queue, has to be a Poisson process of rate lambda, right? Or it has to be Bernoulli lambda delta uh, plus little low delta. All right. So, this is a very interesting finding. I did not, uh, I mean, I said this in a somewhat hand waving way, but the, this can be formalized. The departure process from a MM1 Q is a Poisson process of rate lambda. All right. This may be surprising to you. I mean, the departure process has to be of rate lambda because all the customers that come have to leave. But what is surprising is the departure process is not only a process of rate lambda, it is a Poisson process of rate lambda. This may be a little confusing because you may think that the departures are happening at exponential mu, right? But departures happen at exponential mu when only when the customers are present. When the customers are not present, there is no departures, right? But what we are saying is that the unconditional departure process is Poisson lambda from an MM1 q okay? So, this is formalized in a theorem called Burke's theorem which I will just state. Given an MM1 time sampled DTMC with at steady state with lambda less than mu. Burke's theorem says two things. The departure process is Bernoulli with uh, probability of departure lambda delta plus little low delta every time slot. Okay, it is IID across time slot. So, this is in fact a Poisson process. So, the reason I did not say it is a Poisson process directly is because I am looking at the time sampled chain. Okay? So, if I look at these time sampled little delta intervals, the departure process looks like a Bernoulli IID process with probability of departure equal to lambda delta plus little low delta, which implies that the departure process in continuous time will be a Poisson process. Okay? And second, which is also quite interesting, the state at any time n delta is independent of departures prior to n delta. Okay. So, let us say you are looking at some time n delta, all right. What we are saying is that the number of customers, the state of the system at time n delta is independent of past departures okay, in the MM1 queue. Okay. This may seem a little surprising because you may think that, you know, if, if I just told you that in the last, uh, let us say, a few slots, I had a lot of departures, let us say, right. In the last a few slots, I had a lot of departures. You may think that, well, the queue must be relatively empty, right. That is not true in an MM1 queue, all right past departures are independent of the current state in an M1Q. Okay? And this is uh, a consequence of our reversible, uh, the reversibility of the M1 chain. In fact, if you look at the forward chain, in the forward chain, we want to prove that the state at current time is independent of past departures. right? But if you reverse the chain, if you run it in reverse time, so we want to show that the occupancy of the queue in the forward uh, chain is independent of the number of departures, uh, the, the number of departures in the past and the time of their departures, right. But if you look at the reverse chain, past departures in the forward chain are nothing but future arrivals in the reverse chain, right. Future arrivals for the reverse chain. So, the reverse chain is an MM1Q, right. 
future arrivals are independent of past arrivals and past services in an MM1 queue, right? So, the number of people in the in the queue in the reverse chain is only a function of past arrivals and past services, right? Correct? So, for the reverse queue, future arrivals are independent of the current state. But in the reverse queue, future arrivals are nothing but the past departures in the forward queue, right? So, at any time n delta, the state of the forward queue is independent of the departures in the past, all right. So, this is a very seems like a very reasonable straightforward argument if you use reversibility and use the fact that the reverse process is also a legitimate MM1 queue, all right. Proving these things directly is fairly hard, all right. Even proving that the departure process from an MM1 queue is a Poisson process directly is not easy, it is quite hard. But using reversibility, it becomes very natural. Likewise, proving that past departures and current state uh, state of the queue are independent in an MM1 queue is very direct using reversibility arguments. Okay, these two statements are uh, given by this very important theorem called Burke's theorem. Okay, which is a consequence of reversibility. I stopped here.